Hey there, this is Andrew, and today we're going to be completing our tic-tac-toe series by doing a bit of polish. We're going to make it look a little bit better than just our gray and white palette you see here. So we're going to be getting some fonts, we're going to be doing some shaders, we're going to be doing a custom cursor. So it's going to be not a long video, but we're certainly going to be doing a lot of things. So let's go ahead and let's get started. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to import a, a new font. Now this is something you can just download off the internet, which I got mine off of defont.com and once you've downloaded it you don't necessarily have to install it on your system you just have to click and drag it over and in my case I'm going to put it in the other folder and this is the font that we're going to be using for our X's and our O's and we're also going to be using it for our custom cursor so let's go ahead and let's make that so let's go ahead and create an empty object under our canvas and we're going to name it PR underscore cursor just like that, and let's drag that over into our prefabs folder. And then let's go ahead and add a text component on that. Let's drag our new font onto it. And I forgot what size we made our font for our cells. I think we did, oh, it's gonna be under here, 100. So we can go ahead and make our cursor 100 as well. Oh goodness, can't type zeros, there we go. And, and then we're gonna have to actually make a new script for our cursor that we're just gonna call cursor. And we will attach that onto that as well. Whoop, computer's being a bit slow today, there we go. And let's see, what else do we need? Let's go ahead for our cell as well, since we have that text there. When Once we place it, we want our our little X's and O's to have the same font. So let's go ahead and drop that in there. And then let's go ahead and make the text white as well for that. And we're also gonna be creating a, a shader for our background. So if we go here, we go to create, we go to shader, and we're just gonna create a simple unlit shader. And we'll just call that gradient. And then before we even change anything, let's make a new material that we're gonna be basing our gradient on. So let's do that. And it should automatically place it in the unlit gradient right there. Okie dokie. And then I believe that gradient is gonna be on our background, on our image here. So let's go ahead and just make that color white. I don't think it's gonna necessarily matter right this second, but let's go ahead and put our material on it, just like that. And we're first going to edit the cursor script, and then we'll be editing our gradient shader. And let's go ahead and open up our cursor in Visual Studio. It's going to be a very simple script. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to reformat this. Let's get rid of this extra stuff. And we're just setting the transform dot position. And we're going to set it to our input dot mouse position. And this is just so it'll follow our cursor around like that and then what we're then going to do is we're going to need to add this functionality to our main script so we can actually output to that text on our prefab so let's go ahead and open up our main script all right so here we are in the main script and we're just going to be editing our awake function as well as our switch and it's going to be pretty simple in our awake we're just going to be calling our well first before we actually call anything we're going to need a variable to hold our cursor and that's going to be the text object. So we're going to make a public text m cursor, and we're going to do m cursor dot text is equal to get turn character. And if you notice, we already made this function right down there. And then we're going to call this every time we switch turns. So after we actually switch. We're going to call that function again right there. So we're setting it as soon as the project begins and then every time a turn is made. All right, so let's go ahead and let's go back into Unity. And if we go to our, let's go ahead and, well, let's not collapse that yet. We need to get the cursor. So let's let that compile. There we go. And now let's just drag our cursor into it. And then let's just double check our cursor and make sure that everything looks good. And I think it does. 
let's actually see, let's go ahead and let's make it a little bit bigger actually. So let's do that. And I think all we have to do now is we have to edit our gradient for our background. So let's go ahead and open up our gradient. All right, so here's our shader. I'm not gonna spend too much time talking about shaders because there's probably people out there that ex can explain it a lot better than I can or a lot more knowledgeable. So this is gonna be pretty simple. It's just gonna be a gradient shader. And for a gradient, you need two colors. So in our properties, we're gonna get rid of this texture variable right here called main text. And we're gonna make two properties for color. We're gonna be having one called main color, main color. It's going to be of the type color. And we're going to initialize that to 111. And we're going to be making a second one that we're going to be calling secondary color. Just like this. And rename it. There we go. And we could, if we wanted to, get rid of some of this fog code for this multi compile fog this unity fog coordinates because we're not necessarily going to be needing it but that's okay we're just going to let it be what we do need to get rid of though are these two variables right here and when you have properties in the top here you basically have to redeclare them down here within the body of the subshader the subshader being this guy right there well subshader naturally and so we're going to be making a float for here and we're going to be calling it main color they have to be the same name in this case and secondary color and like I said before we're just going to be lerping these two colors and since we got rid of that that texture property at the top it's it's here again so what we're going to do is we're going to need to get rid of this statement and change it and it's going to be v.uv and that's coming from the app data v app data having two properties here it's also a struct for the vertex position as well as a um a float 2 called uv which is going to be our text coordinates the texture coordinates and that looks all fine and dandy so let's go ahead and we'll clear out the fragment function the fragments basically when objects are rendered they create fragments and then they convert those fragments into pixels and we're going to be coloring each of those fragments or pixels I guess like I said I'm not a shader pro but I understand enough to get a few things working so we're going to be creating a new float for called color and we're going to be lerping two colors and you probably guessed it it's going to be our main color and our secondary color cool and we're going to be using um, the y value of our UV coordinates to lerp that just like that and then we're going to be returning our float 4 because if you notice in this fragment function we need to return a value that's a fixed 4 which a float 4 is just fine okay so I think that's about it so let's go back into unity to see if we broke anything which if we did I wouldn't be surprised oh okay look at that it did not break so if we go to our Oh, maybe it did. Oh God, it did break. <laughs> um, so let's go back and see what we broke. Oh, I spelt secondary wrong. So let's go ahead and fix that and save it. And let's go back. Oh, there we go. Cool. So that still works, which is good. And then you can come up here and you make it any color you want. You can make it an, this sappy green, or you could make it a blue or something. You can make it anything you like. Unfortunately, I don't have those two colors that I used previously, but that's okay. I kind of liked it the way it was. Uh, let's undo that. Now let's find the way it is. Okay. And I think I forgot previously for our cursor, we just need to set up our alignment here. So our, our X and our O's will be in the center of our cursor. So let's go ahead and do that. And let's go ahead and hit play. All right, so there we go. So we have our X that's following our cursor around and then when we click. Oh, we forgot to do another thing. Goodness gracious, I'm forgetting everything. We also need to turn off the raycast target because that's going to block us being able to click on our little cell pieces. So let's turn that off and let's try that again. All right, we have our X and there we go. So we place our X, we place our O, place our X, place our O, and then we're gonna place our X and X1. 
and we'll probably have to make that look a little bit better too. So let's go ahead and do that really quick. Shouldn't take too long. So let's go ahead and display that. We're gonna get our text. If you want to, you can do this on your own. It's pretty simple, kinda of did it before already. And let's go to our image. And let's also apply our gradient to that. Cool, so there we go. And now let's go ahead and turn that off and let's play it again. All right, so there we go, cool. It's, I think we're done. So thank you for following along. If you did, thank you for watching. If you just did that, um, if you like this video or if you like this series, feel free to leave a like or a comment. If you want to learn how to make another project, feel free to leave a comment and make a suggestion. If you want to see more of my videos, you're also welcome to subscribe. So hopefully I'll see you in the next one.